Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Forgotten Coast Fishing. Here it is, early November. We're kind of in that transition period between fall and winter. We had a night last night in the upper 40s, and it's supposed to get up to the mid 70s or so. So we're going to be on the hunt for some trout and redfish today. Um, just trying to figure out where where they are. They could be scattered you know, in some deeper holes. They could be rising onto the flats, you know, once it warms up today. So today's going to be a lot of hunting and searching, just trying to figure out where those fish have gone in this transition period. So I've got several things tied up today. I'm going to, I do have a top water. I do have kind of a subsurface lure here, both, that's a Rapala. I've got a gotcha plug in case I kind of see something that I might want to cast at. And I've got some soft plastics. I've got a, I've got a, a Trout Trick Z-Man. I've got a Z-Man Slam Shady Paddle Tail. And I've got a, a Curly Tail Z-Man. So all those things I've got tied up just to kind of give me a, a broad spectrum of things to, to give a try. So we're going to go ahead and get out there and uh, see if we can't grab some fish this morning. moved back to the back part of this bay and I've kind of positioned myself in about five or six feet of water. The water's not quite as cold as I thought it was going to be. It's in the uh, upper 60s right now. Um, 67 is what it's showing right now. So, But I am going to go ahead and start out at a little deeper water um, just to see you know, if that cold temperatures last night took those fish down in some deeper holes. So what I'm going to start out with, I've got this quarter ounce um, jig head. This is a weedless style on this Z-Man Slam Shady paddle tail. And my gear breakdown is this a this is 20 pound fluorocarbon on top of that paddle tail. This is 15 pound braid. And this rod, this is a TFO professional medium light power 7-6 foot rod with fast action tip. And this is a pin clash 2 reel. And before I throw this out for the first time, I'm going to put a little scent on here. I'm going to use this Procure um, inshore sort of scent. So I'm just going to go ahead and give this some time to sink to the bottom. It's a quarter ounce, so it's not super heavy. It'll take a couple seconds to get down. And I'm just going to kind of bounce this on the bottom. The other thing about this area is there's this channel that runs pretty deep channel seven eight nine ten feet that runs right here and the you know shallower flats are over here so i've kind of positioned myself right up against this um, channel and uh you know that will give those fish if it did get real cold they have that deep water to kind of get some warmth from and then as they kind of move out over on top of that as it warms up hopefully they'll kind of be in this spot that i've picked out this morning Okay, no luck over here. I even kind of drifted into this channel to see if maybe they were just inside that drop off, you know, in a little bit deeper water. So really didn't get anything. I'm starting to just get pinfish. So I'm going to move back to some shallower grass flats that have some deeper holes in it and see if their fish are kind of mixed in with that higher grass and then the deeper sand holes and uh, see if we can't grab any that way. All right, so as you can see, I've moved a lot shallower. That gets a little deeper as we drift this way. But I'm going to switch it up a little bit. I've got this Z-Man Trout Trick. Same sort of weedless quarter ounce hook. And I'll put some of this Procure on this as well. And this is still a 2500 reel. This is a Daiwa BG. And this is a little bit shorter rod. This is a 7 foot uh, medium. Look at this. Dense grass carpet here that's why i've got to use you know everything weedless so i'm not going to go super slow with it i want it just to kind of bounce right on top of that grass all right we got one here 
something little. I think it's a little trout. Yep, little trout. All right, so we found them. Now, what happened here, or what's going on, we're getting into some deeper water. So we, well, he, I don't think he's gonna be 15. But we started out shallower, you know, now we're starting to drift over some deeper water with these potholes and things. Let's see, he deserves a measurement. I don't think he's gonna be 15. Let's give him a shot anyway. No, he's about 14, but a nice little trout here this morning. And, you know, kind of our strategy starting to pay off. So go ahead and get him back. Let's see if we can't get a little bit bigger one. It's starting to get um, deeper. It goes into some sand up here. So we we'll want to kind of get our fish and kind of do our most of our casting before it gets into that just straight sand. Here we go. Oh yeah, man, that one just came up and just sort of grabbed it. All right, here's a good one, y'all. This a shark? What have we got? Oh, we got a little grouper again. Yep, little grouper. We were getting these a couple trips ago. This is kind of a nice one for inshore here. It's a little gag grouper. He's gonna be too small to keep, but we're out of season anyway. We had a quite short season this year. But beautiful fish. I'm going to just take some time to show them to you. Kind of get them in the sun, hopefully. Man, these gag groupers, I show these a lot. I just always love their patterns on them. Just those different sort of geometric type squares. And then you've got these almost circles and lines. Just beautiful fish really good eating when they get to size so let's go ahead and get him back all right so what we've done here we've pretty much gone to the other side of the bay and i've positioned ourselves where we're going to be approaching the flats here on this drift that i've got going here in a few minutes so there's really not any grass just yet but position myself further back so that when we hit those, you know, start to come across those grass, I can work that real good with this paddle tail. And I've gone back to this Slam Shady Z-Man paddle tail. Good thing about this area is the grass is a little bit deeper in general. Y'all look at this stingray. Look at these. Sometimes you can catch them. Look at them all. Man, cow nose stingrays is what those are. Look, one of them stopped off in the sand there. I'm gonna go ahead and put this curly tail on. This is a Z-Man. Haven't tried this yet. here. Little trout again? I think so. Alright, so as you can see, we drifted into that grass, you know, and this is what I was hoping for. Now he's a small one like that first one, but nonetheless, you know, what we were thinking and what we were hoping for and what we planned for is working out, so Maybe there's some bigger ones here. Yeah, he's just a little little guy, 13 or so inches. But, you know, second trout of the day. And we caught him doing the, the tactics that we thought. Finding some grass, finding a little bit deeper water. And, uh, you know, that feels good when, when, when your, your plan kind of comes together and it works. All right, we're getting into some shallow water. And I'm starting to see some mullet jumping up ahead. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch back to this Moonwalker topwater and see if that doesn't attract some of our bigger trout, which it sometimes does.
I'm gonna be kind of working it real slow. Just my twitch is gonna be slow and my reel is gonna be slow just so I can keep that top water in the strike zone as long as possible. That's gonna make for a little bit wider sweep. Oh, got him. All right, here we go. Finally got him on a top water. All right. Yeah, he's got some decent size to him. Yeah, this one may be 15. Is he foul hooked? He may feel a little bigger since he's foul hooked. No, he's not foul hooked. All right, just a good trout. Able to get himself to the bottom. All right. All right, yeah, he was a nice one. That's what we were looking for. That's what this top water does. Top waters oftentimes will grab your bigger trout caught right there in the corner of the mouth. Both hooks, that was good. But you can see, this is what happens to these trout. That hook will kind of tear the mouth a little bit. You know, sometimes that hook can just, you know, ease out like that while you're fighting them. That's why I said, you know, my net was back there. I said, no, I can't do it. If I kind of had done that, I might have let some pressure off that line and very well could have lost them. But look at this trout. He's probably 16, 17. Beautiful trout. I underestimated he's 18. Well, let's get his, this guy in the box. We get to keep three here in my part of Florida. Um, they have to be 15. Well, let's get him in the box. Alright, got one here. Kind of moved over to a little bit more shallow. Found some wind. We were over there where there was just no wind. We were just staying. Oh, he got off. That's okay. He was about a 13 inch trout or so. But what, what I did is I came back over here. You can see where it's sand over there moves to grass. So I'm right on that edge where the sand meets the grass where it's a little deeper. It gets real shallow off that way, but I've got these sand spots around here, and this fish kind of came right here from this little spot we're drifting over right here. You can see how much deeper it is. So that was what I was looking for. And I changed my lure. I've, since I'm so shallow and it's real grassy, I went to this eight ounce weedless hook. And uh, this is a, a Fred scented paddle tail by salt strong it's just going to sink a little slower um, and less likely to kind of get tangled up in the in that grass oh man got him right here at the boat all right all right not a keeper but another trout caught in this sand hole right here exactly where he came from you can see how it gets deeper right there exactly where he came from nice little guy let's let him get back and get a little bigger when I'm using these lighter weights this is an eighth ounce and these smaller profile lures you know it's kind of difficult to cast really far and that's really important out here because as you can see, it's really shallow and really clear. So the further you can get it, that's gonna maximize your strikes. So what I try to do is I try to make sure I'm using my seven foot six medium light rod. I have a couple of them. And when I cast, since I'm usually drifting, if I've got a lot of wind, I'm gonna try to arc it in the air a little more so that the lure stays in the air a little longer and take advantage of that wind. And then lastly, when I go to cast, I make sure I have, I don't know, three or four feet of line already out. So that's gonna be three or four feet further from the tip of your rod and you can cast even further.
Oh man, got one right here. Kind of at the edge where this grass meets the sand. This one might be a keeper, everybody. Uh, he's looking a little smaller as he gets to the boat. Let's pull him up and see though. Another trout though, yeah, he's a little bit too little. Too little. But another nice trout. There again, look at that. All these holes in their sides of their mouth. Got to keep that pressure on them. So nice little guy here. All right, let's get him back. Oh man, all right, here we go. Got another one. Put on a little bit bigger lure. Trying to entice a bigger fish. Let's see if that's the case. Kind of getting down to the bottom. Yeah, I think he may, may be a little bigger. Maybe, 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 maybe. And I emphasize maybe. No, he's not going to be a keeper. So just another small one. He had a lot of, lot of pull to him. A lot of want to, but let's get him back and he can grow a little bit bigger. So I switched over to this 5 inch paddle tail. This is a Slam Shady Salt Strong product. And I'm still using that eighth ounce weight just because I'm still not super deep and I want it to, you know, take some time to get to the bottom. But I'm able to cast it a lot further just because it's a bigger lure, a little bit heavier. Man, what I got here? Oh, a little trout. Yep, got a came back for it. He hit it a time or two, and then I just kind of kept working it, just didn't really change anything. And he came back. So, another little guy. They like this bigger one. You know, if they're going to spend all that effort to come out from where they are and chase this down. I would assume they would go after something a little bigger, make it worth their while to spend that energy. But I'm starting to drift into some deeper water in general. And that's probably having some effect to getting a few more fish here. And this is where he came from, the edge of this sand deeper hole right here. I'd cast it over here and I was just running along the edge of it. And he hit it over here and you know, kind of hit it a little bit back here. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and call it a day. We caught a lot of trout today. I don't know how many that was, but you know, we got that one keeper in the box and that'll be good for dinner. But you know, we tried a lot of different things today, top water, paddle tails, you know, some hard baits. And uh, we're in that transition period where we're not really sure if the fish have, have started to move up into the creeks and rivers and intercoastal waterways, or are they still out on the flat? So you know, today was a lot of searching and uh, found out they're, they're still on the flats, just kind of in deeper water. But uh, once we kind of kind of pinpointed that, you know, we were able to kind of pull up a bunch of fish. But if you found this video helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, I'd certainly appreciate it if you did that. It goes a long way to help me to continue to create these videos. So until next time, I hope to see you on another episode of Forgotten Coast Fishing.